Welcome to SC24, the supercomputing conference to end all supercomputing conferences. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia. And the thing about supercomputing is that it doesn't tend to happen very often within what you think of as a single computer. Uh, in fact, uh, the top 500 supercomputers were announced this week, this year, and the top system had over 11 million CPU cores. 11 million with an M. All of those had to somehow be connected together. We have interconnects on, on the motherboard, and then we have networking that attaches all of these things together. So networking is a critical part of the equation. In fact, you might say that in supercomputing, the network is the computer. And we have two fabulous gentlemen to talk about networking. Jim from Dell, Hemel from Broadcom, Let's talk about how we connect these things together because without what you do, there would be no supercomputer. There would just be like regular computer, right? Yes. Paperweights, Effect effectively <laughs> paperweights. So start us off, Jim. T tell, tell us a little about what you do at Dell and, and, and how the, you know, the partnership with Broadcom around networking. What's, what's going on in the world of networking and supercomputing? Absolutely, this is, this is just a crazy, uh, exciting time uh, in the networking field uh, as AI is just taking off so prolifically in the last 12, 18 months, it's been crazy. And honestly, on the networking side, there's always been a little love, but all of a sudden we're getting crazy love because the speeds are just going through the roof and the network has to keep up. Can I just get a fist bump for us hardware guys? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you know, it's been a little, a, little, a little too much of this. Just give me the service. Don't tell me what you're doing behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah okay. Oh, you're networking? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. We're getting our day in the sun. Continue. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so it's an exciting time to be in the industry and um, and working with you know strategic partners who are at the front edge, you know, cutting the cutting edge. And so, um, my role you asked about, I'm the product manager for Dell Networking, the hardware portfolio. Okay. Uh, and I've been working with with Hemal and uh, Broadcom for I can remember at least 15 years. He remembers even longer. So, uh, yeah. So um, exciting. That's good. That's good. Glad someone has a has a good memory here at the table. I can, <laughs> as they say, I can hide my own Easter eggs uh, at, at, at this point. Hamill, let's get straight to it. You've got show and tell. Tell me, what, what is the leading edge from Broadcom's perspective in terms of networking? What do you, so, what do you have here to show us? Talk about so, what you're doing. Yeah, so I, I've been architect of our networking product for, I have been with Broadcom almost two decades, and it's okay. always exciting. With AI, excitement has gone even higher by having the scale that we never thought about a million GPUs connecting to okay. the next future. Yeah, crazy. So what we have is, we, uh, what I will say is Ethernet as a fabric, and I'm going to show, uh, we have two types of fabric solution. So this is the schedule fabric, we call it Jer Jericho 3 AI. Okay. What it does is the fabric provides all the congestion control, reliability, and other services, and then endpoints will connect to this, and then all the services provided by fabric is completely transparent to so this would be in a chassis that is a switch? That is a switch. Okay, okay. And just to be clear, because you said 20 years back, so the original thing you worked on was the was the tin can with tin cans with strings? <laughs> Between <laughs> close. Yes, was gigabit the, Ethernet is the where, where it started. Yes. Okay, so we have the switch. So the switch here to those endpoints. Okay. Yes. So this is the schedule fabric. Then there is other type of fabric solution, which is our industry leading Tomahawk 5. This is 51.2 terabits per second in a single chip. Okay. So with the two tiers of this, you can build thousands of GPU node cluster or accelerator okay. cluster. And then once you build all this fabric and you get all the load balancing, congestion control, telemetry services from the fabric, you also need the endpoint, which is the NIC. Yeah. This is our 400 gig RDMA NIC. Right, network this interface is, card, yeah. Th this is where all the transport functions are executed by the NIC, all the endpoint congestion control and the ability to move data between GPU memory from one location to other location is facilitated by this. Explain again the difference between these two networks. You said the scheduling network? This is the schedule network. The schedule network, what does that mean exactly? So network itself has built-in uh, capability where it will schedule traffic to be congestion free. Okay. So the congestion control is built into the fabric. Okay. That's one piece. The QoS comes with that and it will also do take ethernet packets and convert that into cells, and the whole cell routing and everything is completely transparent. Okay, you mentioned Ethernet. Um, uh, what is the sort of 
what's the what's the state of the art in terms of um, bandwidth or throughput that's uh, available? Yeah, so speeds, today speeds feeds speeds and feeds. This switch okay can support a single port of eight hundred gig. Okay, and in a single switch you can have up to sixty four ports of eight hundred gig. Okay, or one twenty eight ports of four hundred gig. Okay, so and the and the NICs? This NIC is four hundred gig. Four hundred gig. Okay, a single port. state of the art. Okay, the and do you if you turn that over, are those the little? Did I see a little hint of uh, the other side? The other side. Okay, yes. So each of these little dot has to connect to something else. Correct. These right? are the pins coming yes. out. Yeah. And you can think about this means it has when 128 ports, we are talking about 128 series. Yeah. Coming out or more than that, depending so, on port speed. So Jim, admit it. Reverse and en reverse engineered alien technology. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really. I mean, that's yeah, you know, it starts to make sense now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. what's interesting from a Dell perspective, and I, I want to ask you this: um, pretend Hemel's not here for a second. Uh, you support all sorts of networking technologies, we right? Do. I mean, you yeah, you okay. answer to your customers. Mm -hmm. um, what's different about your relationship with Broadcom? Uh, in terms of Ethernet, I know there's this thing called the Ultra Ethernet Consortium. Yeah, um, I'd love to know that. Yeah, what what uh, what's what's the story with that? What's the what's the real link between Broadcom and Dell on this stuff? Sure. So every kind of networking technology, you know, mm -hmm. partner um, has has its own story, right? And the the thing that we love about uh, Ether, pure Ethernet and our partnership with with uh, with Broadcom is, you know, we are true collaborators. It's not just do this, you know, and take this, and it's no. We have a, a conversation. This is what we're seeing. Oh, really? You know, and we the, things evolve uh, together, as it were. Uh, and so we're not just told this is what you have. You know, thou shalt sell it. It's more of a how can we do better? You know, what what can be improved? What what are your yeah. customers saying? You know, and let's go both together. Go talk to a customer because we trust them, and uh, and they're always you know there for us. So that's a big part of it, certainly. Uh, the technology-wise, um, let's talk about Ethernet for a second. I mean, as a as a whole, I mean, Ethernet is absolutely the dominant, you know, networking type. It, it's the one that won, after all. You know, the Intel won. You know, back in the back in the day, uh, you know, we used to buy workstations, and then you know, and, and everything, and it became all these different form factors. That eventually, now we buy servers. You know, so that's where we ended up. At the same time, Ethernet won. So, are there other options out there? Sure, of course there are, um, but at the same time, there's no doubt that if you stack up all the networks in the world, you know, there's going to be this many Ethernet, and there's going to be this closest competitor is going to be over here. So that are very niche kinds of solutions. So, yeah. So, but general purpose is not a curse either. You know, sometimes oh, we've got to be watered down by doing all this stuff. It has only gotten better and more sufficient over time. And so we look at like the Tomahawk Five we're sitting here, which is an amazing chip. It completely raises the bar for what you need for Ethernet in a a reliable, um, high-capacity AI ML HPC solution. You know, congestion management, um, link control, uh, transport, all those things, and they just keep getting better. And I like to the analogy that I really like is if we look at uh, like the like McLaurin is a is a Dell customer. We all know that they're very vocal, uh, and they have an amazing car. And you know, you can see it today. Next year, it'll have a whole new car. Right. You know, it'll be better, it'll be faster, it'll be more efficient, you know. Um, it's not like what they have today is, you know, rubbish. No, it's an amazing car, right. but there's always more you can do. And so I look at uh, Ethernet, it's the same thing. It has come so far. It is, it is the, the Formula One car, you know, today. And yeah, there's more that we can do. And as we get into Ultra Ethernet, you know, there's some great stuff coming there. And some of those inspirations for Ultra Ethernet, we're already using them, right? And so, uh, but the whole industry will be great to participate at that point. Yeah, so. yeah. That, what I love about the collaboration between your companies is that I, I know that from Broadcom's perspective, um, Broadcom sees the success of AI depending upon scalability, performance, power efficiency, all of those things, yeah. and openness. And uh, and Dell at the same time is this I like to say Switzerland from an AI perspective. Whatever customers need, they'll provide. But more importantly, the fact that Jim, you and I will still be friends next year even after uh, Lewis Hamilton wins the driver's championship in a Ferrari, we, we will still be friends. We can still wear our papaya shirts and toast to Lewis Hamilton's win. But on another note, back to the supercomputing conversation, a lot of the conversations we've been having uh, this week have been around um, this idea that you have electricity coming in, uh, the systems that we all build, what do they mainly do? They mainly generate heat. 
<laughs> Love that. Right? That has to be dissipated. Then what do you do with that? So uh, what are you doing from a power consumption perspective? Because you, you're at the foundation of, of these systems that are being built out. The network is, and Broadcom in particular. How much do you pay attention to uh, how much power is consumed, therefore how much heat is generated? Right. Are you doing anything about that? Or is this the first, you year, is this the first you're hearing about this issue? First time. <laughs> this, we have heard about this every generation we <laughs> came out with. And we, we always, let's start with the NIC. We always design very power efficient NIC. One of the goal behind doing this is when you have fixed function device, it tends to give you the lowest power rather than trying to putting general purpose logic inside, unlike like DPU kind of architecture. So that's okay. one thing. Same thing on the switch side, we always, when we take it to higher speed, we look at what is the power per port. And we tend to have a matrix, like even if you go to like 800 gig switch device, you want to have less than a one watt per port. That kind of matrix. In addition to that, what connects all this, the cables and optics, we're working on linear pluggable optics, which brings down the cost and power. We are also doing co-package optics, which also results in low power. So yes, we do pay a lot of Absolutely. attention to the power. And at the same time, we have to also make sure that those power still can serve the high speed you are, because these networks are always on, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not like we are saving power by keeping them idle. When they are at full power, we are still consuming the lowest amount of power. Now, ba ba very basic question. Uh, the connectivity running from, say, when I think of, you know, I'm looking at a rack, looking at the back of the rack, is it copper coming out or is this all optical? At what, wh where, where, where do we have copper connections versus optical connections today in the modern configuration? So, so today, if you look at the 400 gig, 800 gig kind of connections, mm -hmm. within rack, you can still use copper. Okay. What we do with our cities being on switches and NICs, you can have extended distance. So your adjacent racks can also use copper. Okay. Beyond, once you go beyond four or five meters, that's when you start seeing the optics. So we have seen people like doing, and of course working with partner like that, like you will see a three rack solution where coppers are connecting the nodes. But then when you go out from there or end of row, that's where you start seeing the optics. Okay, and Jim, do you work with uh, networking software also, or are you primarily on the hardware side? I get my fingers in the software as well. Okay, so, so. so what does that look like in terms of um, you have, let's say that you're building out a massive AI cluster and you've decided to go with Ethernet mm -hmm. for the benefits that it, that it brings. Um, what about the software? Is the software as open? Uh, are you, are you, what does that look like from a, from a Dell perspective? That is a really important question. And um, from the Dell perspective, I mean, every vendor is going to have their own operating system, their own story. From the Dell perspective, we have decided to focus exclusively on open source and uh, based solutions. Um, we use an operating system called Sonic. Sonic, okay, and, yeah, yeah. Yes, and that uh, has roots back to Microsoft and they use it exclusively in okay. all of their yeah. mega centers and everything. And so we worked with them years back and really understood the power of it. And there's a whole community uh, contributing to that. And you're starting to see a lot of big companies are uh, getting on the bandwagon is starting doing press and, and having some amount of effort, we are all in. Okay, it's, it's for us, it's, as we move forward, it's, kind of, it's all or nothing. And so uh, we see it as very important. You know, we actually partner with Broadcom uh, to help make sure we get the right, you know, side development that's happening and then, you know, and uh, working with them, we make sure that we have the full robust solution uh, that our partners can go to market with with confidence. So where's the bottleneck today? Is it is it is it networking? Is it uh, accelerator? Is it CPU? Uh, you know, we chase around decade after decade, whack a mole, chase the bottleneck. Um, where is it now? Can we saturate? Can we saturate a network like this um, with what's coming out of these processors at this point, or or do we have a That's little a headroom? Very... What's uh, or is that it? I know. All together now, it depends, right? <laughs> there is some amount of that, but there but are some, what, but some general. Thoughts? Some general. It's a very interesting question, actually, because it used to be that you know the networking part was so far ahead that we just never got complaints. Okay. And honestly, we work with the server team and the storage team, and you know they were, oh, you're still using that? Are you serious? You know, but that's not the case anymore because of okay. GPUs and the you know the high capacity NICs that that have come out. You know, from the likes of Broadcom. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they've made it so that they're uh, basically kind of step step 
why is that about the same almost. Okay. I mean, we're we're releasing 800 gig ports, and so our fabrics can be based on 800 gig, where the server today is 400. But within six months, they'll be you know they're at our heels, right? And it's never been that way historically. And so, yeah. so you're right. We have to be very careful that uh, we make sure we keep keep enough in front of them, so that um, when they when they assume it's going to work, they assume the link is going to be there. They assume the connectivity is going to be there, solid, tested, you know, and grounded. And uh, it's definitely more of a challenge now than it was two years ago, even. Okay, interesting. Final question, Hemel. Um, are there any pesky constraints associated with physics that are looming on the horizon here? Or is the main concern, frankly, the fact that these things that you build that go into systems are part of, part of an environment that is, that's, that's becoming increasingly dense and hot? Is that the, is, are thermals the main concern? Or is there something else that's going to limit this doubling every period? What's what's what are we faced up against? For the near term, I don't see the physics is going to prevent. We will keep doubling. Uh, to tell you the truth, frankly, what I see is from system side, as this is getting to large scale and complex system, mm -hmm. software layer libraries and tuning, that's where we need to have even more effort here because okay. how are they going to take advantage of this all the way from the top layer? So, gentlemen, I think we can all agree. It's the software guy's fault. We're throwing them under the bus. No bottlenecks here in hardware land. Hamill from Broadcom, thanks for being here. Jim from Dell, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dave. We've enjoyed being here. Thank you, Dave. Absolutely. And for myself, Dave Nicholson, thank you so much for joining us here on 6.5 on the Road at Supercompute 24. Stay tuned. <laughs>